So, last talk of the day, um, well, last scheduled talk of the day. Um, our presenter is an electronics engineer finishing his master's degree at the University of Melbourne, um, who is uh, heavily involved in the Lua community and is going to tell us about application programming in Lua. Uh, please make him welcome. Thanks. Um, cool. I've been programming Lua since I was way back in probably year 10 in school. Um, and since then, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, so about Lua, um, Lua is a dynamic scripting language. Um, it's quite small and it fits 150k in memory compiled. You can skin it down to about 64k um, if you take out a few certain features, which means you can fit it away inside your L, even your L1 cache um, and also as well as embedded microcontrollers. So you can use it pretty much anywhere. It's quite fast um, on a lot of benchmarks. It tops other non-optimized uh, scripting languages, so Python, Ruby, it's quite faster than them, and with LuaJIT, which is a JIT compiler, it um, it pretty much goes on level with C, um, compiled C in speed. So the regular complaints about scripting languages that they're not fast enough is completely unapplicable. Um, I think the C API is quite good. It's stack-based, which some people don't like, um, but that's your own thing. Um, and it's quite well known in the game industry, especially for being uh, highly embeddable. A lot of games will use it. Um, WoW is half written in it. Um, I, oh, I can't think of other games, but like Adobe Lightroom is pretty much written in it, um, as well as anything on your phones. As you like Angry Birds, all the levels will be scripted in Lua. Um, it's 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 everywhere. Um, but it's very ri oh, that's not the right thing. It's very easily to, uh, used to actually write applications itself. It's only used for embedding. Um, commonly cited reasons would be that there's no modules to use. Um, Lua itself doesn't come with many batteries. Um, so if you want to use uh, threading, um, sound, video, um, even a lot of things that you'd expect to be um, that are in POSIX you can't use, you can't iterate over a directory without these libraries. Um, and si well, since probably about four, five or six years ago, um, the libraries were hard to find and hard to use, but since then that's been like quite cleared up. Um, there's a thing called Lua Rocks, which is very equivalent to um, Ruby Gems or Python Eggs, um, which makes it very easy for users to install. Um, the other thing people complain about is that there's no one library to do each task. Um, if you want to, say, have a, an array, there's not only one way to do an array. Um, which gets newbies very confused. Um, one of the few applications written in Prosody and out in the wild is um, Prosody, which is an XMPP server, um, which is, yeah, quite well known, I guess. Uh, and this is just a small side note. Um, I personally don't know what to think of um, how to fit Lua Rocks and these Ruby gems into your distro. They don't mesh well with the package manager. Um, that's something that I'd like to talk to someone about, but yes. Uh, cool, very, there's some very cool benefits about working in Lua. Um, there's only one native data structure called the table, which is an associated array from anything to anything, and you can mix types. Um, so if you want a normal array, just use integers as keys. You want a set, you just use well, whatever your set values are and all set them to true or something. Um, structured dictionaries, just use a string key. It's um, it's all quite optimized um, and you sort of can't go wrong. You just write whatever comes to your head and it generally works. Um, it's also got coroutines built into the language, which is essen essentially context swapping, um, which is very useful with dealing with callback-based um, APIs. Um, I know for an example would be in node.js, you end up writing every function with a callback. Um, so if you swap this back to being coroutine based, when you, is your callback just resumes your function wherever it left, um, which means you can write everything in a very linear fashion, um, which I like. The other biggest thing lately is Fluidjet FFI, which allows you to call native C functions without any, anything besides a declaration and a shared, and a shared object, um, and also let's use native uh, data types and structures, which obviously get the extra speed um, instead of using the double, which is the only one number form the single number format in Lua, you can use ints and actual structs instead of tables and stuff. Uh, and lately, I've sort of stopped using tradi the traditional C API for Lua and written everything with this um, foreign function interface. Uh, this thing is really annoying. A uh, gra few graphs with Lua. Um, all strings are intern, so it's very hard to have an actual buffer. 
um, as in if you're just getting a buffer from one API and want to give it to another one, a little interns it, obviously the FFI fixes that. Um, uh, otherwise, there's no bit library built in, which means you have no bitwise operations, which um, can get very bad when other APIs expect you to be masking things or grabbing, bit, um, grabbing things out of bit masks. Um, in Lua 5.2, they did bring out the bit library, um, which, did fix, which has fixed that, um, and Lua JIT has come with one built in for a long time. Um, otherwise, there's a few, I don't know, who here actually programmed in Lua before? Anyone? Cool, well, just a brief note. Um, there is this thing called meta methods, which is when something traditionally wouldn't work with the type, is then you try and concatenate two numbers together, uh, numbers are a bad example, um, concatenate two tables together, that essentially has no meaning, so you can provide a backup operator. Um, same with adding, it's how you do, um, I suppose, objects. If you want to add two tables together, you pr provide a backup because there's no default plus, like, plus method. Um, but there's a problem because you can't override things sometimes, um, which means when you want to encapsulate an object within another object or a proxy object or something, you can't defer everything through, um, which is sort of annoying. Um, why doesn't down work? <laughs> Okay, um, LOMP is my personal uh, project. It's a Lua open media player. Um, it's essentially a client server media manager and player, very similar to um, MPD or XMMS2 in architecture, um, although I've got quite a few personal preferences, such as um, use a queue to put songs on instead of a playlist, and then playlist puts in the queue, then you media manager, manage a playlist, etc. Um, and in, do, in creating this um, project, I had to pretty much um, sort out what to do with these modules. Um, and as I went through, I need an audio tag library, an event framework, audio decoding, audio output, some sort of database to keep all the songs and their metadata in, as well as uh, a way to make clients that people would want to use. Um, obviously, it's not finished um, and it's still got quite a lot left, which I haven't been able to do much lately because of work. <laughs> um, so, library choices. Uh, for a tagging library, I pretty much I went through every option there is um, libtag, libid3, everything. Um, but there's no sort of good one catch-all uh, tagging library which does every format that I wanted. So which, that was MP3, FLAC, WAV, PAC, OG. Um, they, and there's also features that they all miss, such as um, you can't have multiple values for each key, for example. Um, so FLAC allows that, id3 doesn't for some fields. Um, it, it, it's, it was a complete mess. Um, one of the few libraries I would actually recommend for it is called Mutagen, which is part of the Quadlibet project. Um, it's the only thing I've ever found that can seem to manage tags correctly. Um, anyway, I decided to pretty much write my own tagging library, which is rather complete. Um, I just haven't really packaged it. Um, otherwise, for audio decoding, I started off with that as a sort of last thing, uh, which is a bad idea. Um, so I wanted to have a callback list. Uh, a callback for each frame of audio is actually quite a bit of overhead. Um, I didn't want it to be threading, so, so the G stream was out. Um, I wanted it small, um, knocked out sort of FFmpeg and stuff. Um, and I, I was trying to look into libvlc and other, other such things that were quite complex for what I needed to do. So I ended up binding every library and every codec manually, um, which was not as hard as it sounds with the FFI. I could essentially um, just make a small wrap around each library. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, audio output, I used OpenAL. It's one of the few cross-platform um, sort of audio output things that you don't need to touch configuration for. Um, as in you just select the sound card and the sound comes out. Um, it works with every, with Elsa, why can I not think, Pulse Audio um, works on Windows. It even works on embedded devices if they've got the right thing set up. It's, it's probably the best thing out there. And event framework, um, responding to uh, sort of as a client server media player, you need to respond to select or epoll, etc. Um, LibEV was the best way to abstract all that. That's just and data management. I did it all with a Lua table and persisted it to a file. Um, it's quite a dynamic data structure. Um, so to use Lua JIT, the FFI, you need to pre-process your um, pre-process your header files. As in, so you, you get the original library, you pre-process the header files and it reads all the declarations and types and you can just use it. Um, so to do this, you have, you have to use GCC as a preprocessor, which is a lot harder than you might uh, initially think. Um, obviously, you start with um, just chucking in uh, dash E for preprocessor only. Um, and 
I should try and show this. So I have a bigger resolution when I was practicing this. <laughs> okay, so just say we want to um, send sand file, was my example. Um, start sending it through your CE, and you have a crap load of line markers, um, which is being cut off. Okay, so you have these things which are not recognized. Um, next step was to chuck in P, whoops, uh, which extracts all them, which actually is quite good for feeding in to get all your function definitions. Um, after this point, you um, yeah, so obviously to automate it, you have to add include directories. Um, and for most of your libraries, that's what you need for the function definitions. Um, but when a C API expects you to use a preprocessor, so, so when a C API expects you to have a preprocessor and be writing in C, you get, can get quite more um, complicated. Um, and a lot of, for example, headers will, will then themselves include sys.type.h. And then if you then preprocess two different files, they both get all of the um, sys.type.h headers, and then you have redefinition errors which is very annoying because you have one, you write one library using the FFI and it works great by itself. You, you, you write another one, it works great by itself, put the two together, you get all sorts of redefined errors. Really bad. Um, so, uh, you sort of learning, out of this I sort of concluded a few good things about good C programming. Um, defines and macros should essentially not be seen by a C library user. Um, all defines can almost reasonably be um, used as enums instead, and I don't see many reasons not to. For example, um, seek set cur end in your standard ANSI C header files. Um, they're impossible to get out of the GCC preprocessor. You have to actually go in and grab them with uh, EPDM. Only way to get those out, which is very annoying. Um, and in fact, actually, you have to pa I had to pass all these with a regular expression um, to try and extract these common things because they're different per system. Um, I, yeah, I've, on program startup, or first program startup, I generally um, try and create a database of all these original defines and macros. Um, obviously, macros can't call it all. I'm from a different language. I don't understand C macros. Um, so where you can, just use a function in line if you have to. Uh, oh yeah, except for obviously things that are only applicable to C, such as um, macros where you want to um, have a nice iterator for people to use or pre pre input a for loop, say you're a linked list or something. I don't know. Um, yep, been through that. Um, so a few tricks with the FFI. You can tri um, you can pretend that your type is a different type. Say you get a void back um, from a library. You yeah, so with Wavepack was an example. You can just make it into an opaque type, and it doesn't. The FFI doesn't care what it's passing around, um, and it makes it so you can attach type information because otherwise it gets mapped to void, and you can't attach type information to void. Um, and to avoid the whole re redefinition errors, every time you run GCC DM, you've got to feed it back into itself on top of the next input file, um, which can get quite annoying. Um, but it's good because you can also, once you made these forever for each shared object or library version, you can then distribute these with your executable um, or for Windows or, yeah. A um, few annoyances in the differences between command line for actually generating these because I'll call out to um, GCC with execute. So um, echo in Windows doesn't support new line. You can't press an enter in the middle of it. So every line in the text file you have to put to a different echo command to pipe to whatever your thing is. Um, the greater than character has to be escaped with a caret, otherwise it does redirection, sorry, um, yeah, redirection to a file. Um, the, for standard error it's yeah, two greater than as opposed to and two greater, greater than and null versus dev null. 
Um, just a few differences that took me a while to actually figure out. Um, file formats. So writing a tagging library had to deal with a lot of different file formats and I think that I would know what to do myself when, if I ever had to write one. Um, prepending to a file is very hard. A lot of um, libraries provide buffer space uh, at the start or a bit of padding. Often this padding isn't enough. Um, which means that you have to rewrite the whole file, especially if it's something like a FLAC file, which can be, say, 400 meg, and you've got a bit of metadata at the start of the file, if someone wants to add, say, a picture, or the, a picture of the album art at the start. You have to read the whole, you have 400 meg, and you have to read into the next thing. Now, I want this to work in a memory constrained device. I am not happy. <laughs> the other, otherwise, in NCC, there is no truncate or F truncate. This amazed me. Um, I don't know how it was sort of overseen. So to actually be completely cr cross-platform, you have to make a new file, copy everything across, delete the old file, co oh, copy, copy permissions, which isn't in NCC, but yeah, um, and then yeah, rename the rename the new file because that's the only operations you have in NCC. Um, also missing a subsecond timing in sleep, um, which I ended up using the select call for because they're all cross-platform. It's the only nice cross-platform sleep around. Um, endianness. Um, a lot of the times flags will swap in bit endianness in, inside a single file format. So you'll be reading something about how many channels an audio file has and it will be um, inside a little endian um, byte with a big endian like two bits in the middle that, and the number of channels but then again, later you'll have the sample rate, which is inside of the opposite end in this byte with an opposite end in this bit. So to actually extract these things is stupid. Um, and just one of the, as FLAC is a relatively new format, it actually uses both end indices as well. Um, so it uses one for its header, and then because it uses Vorbis tags, Vorbis tags are length prefix strings, and the length is a little end in while the FLAC has all its details in big end in format. It's, it's a complete mess. Um, and network protocols. Um, because I was very similar to MPD and XMF2 in architecture, or at least at a superficial level, I tried to um, sort of put a compatibility layer in so that their clients, which are not look all pretty and you've already got them on command line, you've already got tray icons and stuff for them, you could use them with my player. Um, it's not as easy as I hoped. Um, for XMMS2, their wire protocol is completely undocumented and their C library to talk with it is also undocumented and changes every couple of months, or at least it did back four or five years ago, uh, which meant it was completely unworkable. Um, while MPD was, their original format was do quite well documented, um, but they, since then they implemented all sort of extensions which weren't mutually usable, I guess. So if you use one feature, you couldn't use the other feature and they'd change as, we, as they go up versions, but I wanted to support all of them, which I couldn't. Um, and otherwise, there's quite a few protocols um, that serialize native data structures. Um, so between computers, they don't make any sense. They'll just um, put a, they'll just like save an int or something into a struct and send it over. They assume it's gonna be on the same computer. It's, it might not be. Um, it, an int is now 64-bit instead. Um, you can't read it as well as, uh, it's just annoying as hell. And mpris, which is a massive thing. All the, if you, in your regular distribution, um, all like your multimedia key, keys on your keyboard and anything um, up in your tray to do play, pause, etc. they all use a dbus thing called mpris, um, which is okay for basic things. It, it, it's actually quite a long, um, I suppose, definition. Um, it also is, um, supports how you have to, have to send a playlist through for it to be displayed, um, about what metadata fields you have to have, and these are completely incompatible with what I had envisioned. Um, so that sort of compatibility was hard to get. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I wanted to, how much time do I have? Uh, not much. Um, cool, all right, questions then. No questions? Okay, maybe you can do your demo. <laughs> oh, okay, sure, hang on, there's a question up here. 
Um, you were saying that the uh, compiled size of a Lua program is typically under 150 kilobytes. Well, the Lua interpreter itself is 150k for the reference interpreter. Ah, right, the reference interpreter, I see. I was going to ask how large the interpreter wound up being. Yeah, cool. so um, the interpreter is 150k, and then you just have your text files, which um, um, well, however long they are. You've just knocked your cable out. That's no, I didn't. It's on the wrong mode. Well, yeah. No yes. No, that's turned off my laptop, that one. No, that one. Yes. Got there eventually. Uh, um, so, so do a quick demo of um, how you might do a libsound file. I'm hoping that's a relatively um, an API that you might all know, or at least you know the vague bits of it. I don't know. Um, so this is the libsound file documentation. These are the functions you have. Uh, it's pretty much, if you don't know, it's a library for reading every different type of endiness of like wave file and stuff and converting them to whatever you want. So usually to PCM 16-bit data. Um, so as a demo of the Lua FFI, I would, okay. So for those who know Lua, uh, you don't actually don't need that. Uh, FFI is that, um, I'm loading this file. So the output of this command, I'm just saving to sound file defs.h. Except that I forgot the minus. Um, which you can just see is that pretty much. Load that straight in to Lua, which is just open the file and read it. Um, give it to FRC defs and now I can immediately Oh, and then load the DLL, or sorry, the um, shared object. So go on and using this eight, these docs, you can, I'll just do, because it's very quick, I can probably just do a version command, I'm assuming it's got one. Command. Um, okay, so first problem here is obviously that we don't actually know what F SFC get lib version is. Um, it's going to be in the header file somewhere. So at this stage, just to be quick, I'm going to just search for it. No? Oh, sorry. I actually just remembered that this is actually this library is good, and it, that's an enum, so we're actually yeah. sweet. Um, uh, cool, so the sound file dot sf command. You need a sound file object, or it can be null, I'm assuming. I'm just checking what it takes. It's like zero. It takes a buffer and a size of buffer. So here we go. Um, just and what we need is a, a pointer to a buffer. So that's actually that. And what does it return? Int, print it, and then print if I do string of buff. Hopefully that will work. I haven't tried this, so cool. wonderful. So instead of actually writing a, yeah, you can afford it if you want. Um, instead of actually writing a full binding to the library, you can immediately call it from Lua without any, I suppose, extra logic. Um, which means you can go straight off the docs instead of messing with the stack, which I know people didn't like. 
Um, yeah, cool. That's pretty much it, I guess. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks for the talk.